We've seen how important insects are as a food source for many different animals. But insects are also important as food for people. For people from North America or Europe, the idea of eating insects may seem strange or even objectionable. But for more than two billion people around the world, insects are simply part of their diets. In my travels, I've had many opportunities to eat insects. In a market along the Amazon River in Peru, I tried roasted palm weevil grubs. In Venezuela, I found a hot sauce made from ant queens, reported to be an aphrodisiac. In Mexico, I snacked on fried crickets and sautéed ant larvae. In my experience, eating insects isn't just a novelty to experience as a traveler; it's a way of connecting with the local culture. And besides, they're tasty. Insects have been a part of many cuisines for centuries. Insects may have even played an important role in the evolution of our species. One of the most important steps in the evolution of humans was an increase in brain size. As our ancestors' brains became larger, there was a need for more calories in the diet because the brain demands a lot of energy. Animal protein is a rich source of energy, but hunting game isn't always reliable. Early hominid hunters might have come home with an antelope or elephant from time to time, but they probably couldn't depend on meat from big game animals on a daily basis. Foraging for fruits, nuts, and other edible plant parts is a more reliable way to find food, but plants aren't as rich in energy and often lack essential nutrients like protein and iron. Insects may have provided the ideal solution to the energy and nutrient needs of early humans. Insects are abundant, especially in tropical regions like the African savannas, where most of human evolution occurred. Early humans probably ate lots of different types of insects, from beetle larvae to locusts. But social insects like ants and termites were likely among the most important insects in their diets. Because they live in nests that can contain thousands of individuals, a nest of ants or termites can be a very reliable source of food concentrated into a small area. Chimpanzees, our closest living relatives, are known to eat ants and termites. Young chimpanzees learn to eat termites by watching older chimps make a simple tool out of a stick by stripping away the leaves and side branches. They then insert the stick into a hole in a termite nest in just the right way, so that the termites grab or bite the stick. When they pull it out, the stick is covered in termites, and the chimp happily laps them up. 1.8 million-year-old tools made of bone that have been found in South Africa are thought to have been used by early humans for collecting termites. The tools were made by a species of hominin called Paranthropus robustus. A member of the group known as the Australopithecines, that were our evolutionary cousins, the tools were made from animal bones and are worn down at one end, suggesting that perhaps they had been repeatedly stuck into termite nests, the way that modern chimpanzees use sticks. To determine if bone tools could be used to collect termites, anthropologists made similar tools from animal bone and tried collecting termites themselves. They found that the modern bone tools were not only an effective way to collect termites, but that the tools they made ended up with thin parallel grooves, just like the ancient bone tools, suggesting that they may indeed have been used for collecting termites. Another reason to believe that early humans ate termites comes from chemical analyses of fossilized teeth. Analyses of the hominin teeth found at the same site in South Africa where the bone tools were found showed that 35 to 40 percent of their diet had a chemical signature of grasses or sedges. Grasses and sedges weren't commonly eaten by early humans because they're hard to digest. It's possible that the hominins were eating insects that had eaten grass, which would give their teeth the same chemical signature as if they had eaten grass directly. Even if they were eating some grasses or sedges, these plants contain carbohydrates and minerals, but not much protein. So the hominins would have needed other foods to round out their diet. Chimpanzees can get about half of their daily protein from ants and termites, 
which require a lot less effort to collect than other sources of protein, especially meat. Our species, Homo sapiens, evolved about 200,000 to 300,000 years ago. Until about 10,000 years ago, all humans were hunter-gatherers and would have regularly eaten insects. That means that for the vast majority of our species' history, insects have been an important part of our diets. And as we'll see, they still are. Insects continue to be eaten by many modern hunter-gatherers. The San people of the Kalahari Desert in southern Africa collect termites, hawk moth caterpillars, grasshoppers, ants, and buprested beetle larvae. Australian Aboriginal tribes in the Northern Territory eat termites, ants, and beetle larvae. They also are especially fond of witchetty grubs, the larvae of moths in the family Cossidae that live in acacia trees. The Ache people of eastern Paraguay forage for beetle larvae, especially palm weevils, whose larvae live in the trunks of palm trees. Palm weevils are also eaten by many people in the Amazon rainforest, such as the Hoti and Yanomamo people of Venezuela. Interestingly, rather than simply collecting palm weevils when they happen to find them, the Hoti people use their knowledge of the beetle's life cycle to their advantage. They cut a palm tree and make a few incisions into the trunk, then leave it on the forest floor. When they return two or three months later, the trunk will be filled with palm weevil grubs ready to harvest. But hunter-gatherers are by no means the only people that eat insects today. Many traditional cuisines include insects as important ingredients. And as interest in traditional foods has grown, insect-based dishes are making a comeback. Let's take a quick tour of some of the ways that insects are eaten around the world. The best known insect food, of course, is honey. When you eat honey, you aren't eating the bees themselves, but you are eating some of their saliva. But bees are edible, especially the larvae, which are a prized delicacy in many places. After all, you are what you eat, and the bee larvae only eat honey and flower pollen, so they're delicious. In Laos and Cambodia, honeybee larvae are eaten while still in their wax honeycomb cells. The honeycomb is wrapped in banana leaves and roasted over hot coals, then eaten whole. In Japan, the annual Heibo Festival is centered on collecting and eating yellow jacket wasp larvae. There's also a competition for the person that brings in the heaviest wasp nest. As we saw in an earlier lecture, silkworms are raised for their silk in parts of South and East Asia. After they've spun their cocoon and the long silk strand is harvested, the pupae can be eaten. In Korea, silkworm pupae are known as biondegi and are a popular street food. They're also canned and sold at Korean grocery stores around the world. Weaver ant larvae and pupae are also eaten in China, India, the Philippines, and Papua New Guinea. The largest larvae and pupae are those that would develop into queens, and these are considered the most desirable. The worker ants aren't often eaten because the formic acid they produce makes them taste very sour, but they're sometimes used as a condiment to provide a citrus-like flavor. Another condiment made from insects comes from giant water bugs. In Vietnam and Thailand, a sauce made from the essence of giant water bugs is used to flavor dipping sauces. The bugs themselves are also eaten whole or ground up with other ingredients. In central and southern Africa, mopani worms are a popular food. Mopani worms are the larvae of an emperor moth, Gonembracia bellina, that often feed on the leaves of the mopani tree. An estimated 9.5 billion mopani worms are harvested each year. In some cities, like Kinshasa, the capital of the Democratic Republic of Congo, an estimated 70% of the 15 million inhabitants eat mopani worms. The collection, preparation, and sale of mopani worms is also an important part of the economy and offers a way for many poor rural families to make a living. Mexican cuisine is rich in insects, especially in the southern Mexican state of Oaxaca. One of the most popular Oaxacan insect dishes is chapulines, grasshoppers seasoned with lime and chilies and fried. They're usually eaten on a corn tortilla as tacos, topped with salsa or guacamole. 
but chapulines are also great eaten by the handful as a crunchy snack. Mexico City is a great place to sample traditional dishes that include insects. At the Mercado de San Juan, I had the opportunity to try a sampler platter consisting of chapulines, scorpion, and chicatanas, leafcutter ant queens. The insects were fried and then drizzled with mezcal liquor, chili powder, and a squeeze of lime juice and served on a bed of sliced citrus fruits. They were absolutely delicious. Another insect common in traditional Mexican cuisine is the maguey worm. It's actually the larva of a butterfly known as the tequila giant skipper. This is the famous worm sometimes found in a bottle of tequila, or more precisely, tequila's smokier cousin, mezcal. The original purpose of including a maguey worm in a bottle of mezcal was to prove that the liquor was strong enough to preserve the larva, which would quickly decompose if there isn't enough alcohol. The female butterflies lay their eggs on the agave plant, which is what tequila and mezcal are made from, and the larvae feed on agave as they grow. So for mezcal producers, including a maguey worm in your bottle is a way to demonstrate the quality of your product while also practicing pest control. Maguey worms are also fried and eaten as tacos like chapulines, and they're tasty. But I have to say, my favorite insect dish in Mexico City in fact, one of my favorite foods of all time was one I first had at an upscale restaurant on a patio overlooking the Aztec ruins of the Templo Mayor. The dish is called escamoles, and it's sometimes described as Mexican caviar. Escamoles are ant larvae. The ants, in the genus Lyometopum, often make their nests in the ground beneath agave plants. They're creamy white and shaped like jelly beans, but smaller. They were sauteed in butter and a fragrant herb called epazote and served with corn tortillas and guacamole. The taste was incredible, rich and earthy. Unfortunately, the larvae aren't easily preserved, so they don't travel well. That means if you want to try escamoles, and I highly recommend that you do, you probably have to travel to Mexico. But many other insect foods are becoming increasingly popular in the US, Europe, and other Western countries. Around the world, high-end restaurants are increasingly featuring insects on their menus. Noma in Copenhagen, which has on multiple occasions been named world's best restaurant, features locally foraged foods, including insects. London's Archipelago features the opposite of local food, with a global menu that includes exotic ingredients like kangaroo, zebra, and grasshoppers with caramel mealworms for dessert. At one of my favorite restaurants in Houston, Sochi, which highlights Oaxacan cuisine, you can order a delicious mole sauce made from leafcutter ant queens. Insects provide an exciting and diverse opportunity for chefs looking to explore new flavors. More than 1,900 different insect species are eaten by people worldwide. By comparison, People only eat a few dozen species of animals and about 200 species of plants. While farms that raise crickets, mealworms, silkworms, and other insects have been around for generations in Asia, the surge in interest in insects as ingredients has led to new insect farms popping up in the United States and Europe. You can now find roasted crickets at some American grocery stores, or you can order them online. I like to eat crickets roasted with a little salt. They're a lot like nuts. They're also really good if you toss them with a little chili powder to give them some spice. In addition to being tasty, one of the reasons why insects are such a valuable source of food for people is that they're very nutritious. In general, insects are high in protein and rich in vitamins and minerals like calcium, iron, and zinc. To get an idea of how nutritious insects are, let's compare the nutritional content of mealworms to that of beef. If we discard how much of their weight comes from water, the remaining weight of beef is 55% protein, whereas mealworms are about 49% protein, so they're very close in protein content. If we look even more carefully, mealworms and crickets have proteins made of different combinations of amino acids. Some are considered essential because our bodies can't make them, so we have to get them from our diets. 
Isoleucine is an example of an essential amino acid that is more abundant in mealworms than beef. 42 grams per kilogram in mealworms versus 16 in beef. On the other hand, some other essential amino acids, like lysine and methionine, are more abundant in beef than in mealworms. So we can't really say that mealworms are any better or any worse than beef as a source of protein. But mealworms have less fat, only 35% compared to 41% for beef. Yet mealworms are rich in the essential fatty acids our bodies need. Mealworms are comparable to beef in terms of omega-3 fatty acids, but mealworms have nine times more omega-6 fatty acids than beef. Beef is often considered a valuable source of minerals like iron, potassium, and zinc. But mealworms have just as much of these minerals as beef. And mealworms have more vitamins than beef, with the exception of vitamin B12. Because they're so nutritious, some people see a lot of potential to use insects as nutritional supplements. Cricket powder is very high in protein and can be used like whey protein, which is made from cow's milk, to fortify smoothies and other foods. I've also used cricket flour to make protein-rich cookies. The cricket flour adds a nutty flavor, similar to walnuts. My kids love them. Crickets and other insects are also being used to make energy bars. If the idea of having insects in your food seems strange or upsetting, you may be surprised to learn that there are already insects in many of the foods we eat. Many foods that are red, like strawberry ice cream or red velvet cake, get their color from a red dye called carmine made from cochineal bugs. As we've already learned, cochineal bugs feed on cactus and the carminic acid they produce has been used for centuries as a natural dye for textiles and ceramics. In 2012, there was a public outcry against Starbucks when it became widely known that their strawberry frappuccinos and other products were dyed with cochineal. The company quickly switched to another insect-free natural food dye. Many candies, like jelly beans, candy corn, and some chocolates, are coated in a substance called confectioner's glaze that makes them shiny. Confectioner's glaze is made from shellac, a resin produced by larvae of the lac insect, Caria lacca. These are scale insects in the superfamily Coxoidea, related to cochineal bugs. Lac insects are some of the most bizarre looking of all insects. They produce a waxy resin as a way to protect themselves from predators as they feed on plant phloem with their piercing sucking mouth parts. Whereas male lac insects look like fairly typical hemipterans, Female lac insects lose many of their recognizable body parts, including legs, eyes, and antennae. You could easily mistake a female lac insect for a blob of dried plant sap. Lac insects are cultivated for their resin, with the greatest production coming from India. Lac insects naturally live in clusters of thousands of individuals. In fact, the word lac comes from a Hindi word that means hundred thousand. The resin secreted by so many lac insects forms a protective sheath around a tree branch. This material is harvested and purified into shellac, which is sold and used as a food glaze. In addition to being used to coat candies, shellac is also used as a shiny wax on citrus fruits. Shellac is also used in the pharmaceutical industry as a coating on some medications. Having shellac on a pill slows the release of the medication so that it can be absorbed by the body over a longer period of time. Shellac is better known for its use as a wood varnish. It's commonly used on fine wood furniture to protect the wood and give it an attractive glossy shine. Shellac is also part of some of our favorite pastimes. It can be found on the lanes of bowling alleys, the outer coating of billiard balls, and playing cards. It was used to make the first phonograph records before being replaced by vinyl. Shellac was also used as a sealant and as insulation in electrical wiring. While it may seem surprising that the same substance used for all these purposes can also be edible, consider this. Shellac is natural, non-toxic, tasteless, odorless, and biodegradable. Another way you may already be eating insects without realizing it is in processed foods produce, and spices, many of which unintentionally contain parts of insects. 
The USDA puts limits on how many insect parts there can be in different types of foods. But the amounts that are allowable may surprise you. A typical chocolate bar can have about 24 tiny bug bits hidden inside. A jar of ground cinnamon can have around 400 insect parts. 10 grams of ground oregano can have up to 1,250 insect fragments. And in just 10 grams of hops, an ingredient in beer, there can be as many as 2,500 individual aphids. While these numbers may sound alarming, the fact is that having small amounts of insects in our food doesn't do us any harm. And the more we think of insects as possible sources of food rather than as contaminants, the more potential there will be for using insects as ingredients in Western cuisines, much as they already are in so many other cultures. One of the reasons that some people consider insects to be the food of the future is that they require much less space and far fewer resources to grow. Rearing livestock like cattle, pigs, and chickens takes a lot of space. Currently, more than 70% of all agricultural land is used to raise livestock. And additional space is hard to come by. 80% of the deforestation in the Amazon rainforest is to clear land to raise cattle. In contrast, raising insects requires very little space. So little, in fact, that it can be done indoors, which makes it possible to raise insects as livestock in urban areas. Cattle, chicken, pigs, and livestock also need water to drink. Fresh water is a precious resource, and about 40% of the water we use goes to livestock, either for them to drink or to water the plants we raise to feed them. Which reminds us that, of course, animals raised as livestock have to be fed a lot. To get one kilogram of chicken, you need 2.5 kilograms of feed. One kilogram of pork requires five kilograms of feed. Beef is the most resource demanding animal protein. To get one kilogram of beef, you need 10 kilograms of feed. By comparison, to get one kilogram of crickets requires just 1.7 kilograms of feed. Another benefit of raising insects for food is that insects produce far fewer greenhouse gases than other animal livestock. Cattle produce enormous amounts of methane as a byproduct of the microorganisms that help them digest their food. Methane is a more potent greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide, so raising cattle is the greatest contributor to greenhouse gas emissions of all agricultural activity. Altogether, livestock contribute 18% of all greenhouse gas emissions, which is even more than transportation. Most insects do not produce methane, the exceptions being termites and some cockroaches. Crickets produce minute amounts of other greenhouse gases like ammonia. But compared to cattle and pigs, crickets produce about 100 times less greenhouse gases. And that doesn't even include the forests that don't have to be cut down to make space for them. Altogether, the small space requirements, minimal water, and feed requirements, and comparatively small greenhouse gas emissions make insects perhaps the most sustainable animal protein we currently have available. If we ever establish human settlements on the moon, Mars, or other planets, insects may even be the only option for animal protein. For one thing, insects fit much more easily into a spacecraft than, say, a cow. And with even more limited amounts of water, oxygen, and food, we wouldn't want to be competing with big animals. There's another advantage to only bringing insects as livestock for space colonies. We get a lot of infectious diseases from animals when a virus or other microbe switches hosts. The mammals and birds we raise as livestock are similar enough to us that the pathogens that infect them can sometimes infect us too. But that's much less likely to happen with microbes that infect insects because insects are much more distantly related to us than our birds and mammals. So by limiting our livestock to insects, we can decrease the chances of future disease outbreaks. Even with all the environmental and health advantages of eating insects, and the knowledge that many people around the world eat insects on a regular basis, some people just can't bring themselves to eat a bug. If you're one of these people, I'd like to challenge you to reconsider the idea of insects as food. 
After all, is eating a cricket or a mealworm really all that different from eating a shrimp or an oyster? So much of what we think of as edible comes down to what we were brought up to consider normal food. If you grew up in Oaxaca, grasshoppers would be just another option for what to put in your taco. If you were raised in Korea, then you might see silkworm larvae as comfort food. Perhaps future generations around the world, and even those living on other worlds, will all consider insects as an essential part of their diets.